if you're thinking of becoming a helicopter pilot that is awesome and there's several licenses that you can get and each license dictates what you can and cannot do as a helicopter pilot so in this video i'm going to go over all the different kind of licenses that you can get and what each one entails Hi, I'm Rick James from The Pilot Teacher and I've been a helicopter pilot for several decades now and I wouldn't have been able to do that without the right kind of helicopter license. So this video we're going to talk about the private pilot's license, the commercial pilot's license and also the ATP pilot's license and what each one requires to gain it and what each one allows you to do. So let's go and have a look. So in the United States, to become a helicopter pilot, you need to get your private pilot license or private pilot certificate. To be able to do that, you need to be at least 17 years old and you need to be able to get a third class medical certificate. Now, the private pilot certificate is the first license or first certificate that you can get. And during the training for your private pilot certificate, you need to have done at least 40 hours of flying. 20 of those hours need to be uh, dual with a certified instructor and you need to do 10 hours solo. Those are the pure minimums. Within those 40 hours, three hours must have been done at night. So it gives you some nice exposure to be able to fly a helicopter at night. Now for those 40 hours, the minimum costs um, it's usually around about fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars but I've never met a student that can do a private pilot certificate in 40 hours. It's usually between 50 to 60 hours just because learning to fly a helicopter is a very complex aircraft and it takes a long time to get used to be able to hover. Um, so it's usually around about the twenty to twenty two thousand uh, dollars for most people to get there private pilot certificate for a helicopter. But once you've got your private pilot certificate, it is awesome. I still remember the first flight I did after getting my private pilot certificate. And it is awesome. You can basically go and rent or you can even purchase your own helicopter. Um, you can get endorsed and trained onto different aircraft, different helicopters. Um, and it allows you to basically take them and go fly day, night, VFR. And it's awesome it's so liberating being able to just go and fly a helicopter by yourself now with a private pilot certificate the limitation is that you cannot earn money with a private pilot certificate so basically if you wanted to take three of your friends out flying you had to pay an equal share of the rental costs or if there's just two of you you have to pay the majority so at least 51 percent of the rental costs um, the FAA does not like you earning money as a private pilot. Um, you just don't have the experience yet. So they want you to be purely for pleasure flying only. Some of the things that you can do with a private pilot certificate when you've got your aircraft is you can go on cross country trips. You can go and fly and see places. You can go for weekends away and fly the helicopter to a nice resort out on a lake or something like that. You can go to um, fly-ins, so places that, um, like airports and flying clubs, they open up their doors and have barbecues, so you can go fly into them. You can go take your, your partner out for a, a nice meal at a restaurant, just go and fly the aircraft, make sure you've got permission to land there already. Um, it's a really, really nice way to have a meal. The other thing that you're going to be doing now is if you are looking to get um, a career as a pilot is you're going to need to start flying more hours and this is called hour building um, to get you ready to start training for your commercial pilot certificate. So these are the things that you can do as a private pilot and basically it's, it's for your recreation, for your pleasure, but you can't earn money from flying a helicopter with a private pilot certificate. Okay, the next certificate is the commercial certificate. And this is what you will need as a bare minimum to be a pilot um, for a career. You need to be at least 18 years old. You need to already have a 
private pilot certificate for helicopters. You're going to need to be able to gain a second class medical certificate as a minimum. First class or second class works fine. And then there's two ways that you can go about your commercial certificate. There's a part 61 and a part 141 training courses, syllabuses. So the part 61 is kind of a very flexible approach. You can do your training however you wish, um, but you're going to need to be at at least 150 hours of total time before you can apply to take your check ride. The other way, which majority of career pilots do this, is to, under the part 141 program. And this is an FAA approved training syllabus and it's usually um, done by a flight school. And because it's an approved training syllabus, the FAA have dropped the hours to only 115 hours before you need to go for your check ride. Um, so it's a nice way of not having to pay so much because you're on an approved syllabus of training from good instructors at a good quality school. So to take your private pilot certificate, you need to be anywhere between 115 to 150 hours, depending on which part you've done. Um, you're going to need at least 20 to 30 hours of dual instruction and 10 hours solo just as part of the commercial pilot training. You're going to do five hours at night and you're also going to do five hours of simulated instrument flying during your training program. Um, these are pre-requirements for the commercial check ride. It's going to take roughly around 13 to 17,000 if you follow the bare minimums, but most students take a little bit more time. And depending on the part that you pick, it can be anywhere from 20 to $30,000 to get your commercial pilot certificate. Now, once you've got your commercial pilot certificate, you can now be employed as a pilot. Um, so you can fly during the day, you can fly during the night, but you can only fly under VFR conditions. You can't fly IFR um, without an instrument rating. So with the commercial pilot certificate, you can go into many different kinds of jobs. You can go into flying tours. You can be a utility pilot working out in the bush. You can be a police pilot. You can be an uh, EMS pilot, firefighting pilot, news pilot, whatever. There's, there's so many different jobs that you can do as a commercial pilot certificate. And then the last certificate that you can get is the Airline Transport Pilots License or ATPL. Uh, this is the highest license or certificate that you can get as a helicopter pilot. You need to be at least 23 years old and you need to have a commercial rotary license and an instrument rating. You also need a first class medical certificate and you need to have at least 1200 hours of flight time. So the ATP is basically something that you work towards once you've become a helicopter pilot. It's generally used for uh, multi-crew, IFR, multi-engine helicopters, um, things like offshore pilots, um, EMS pilots using two crew or VIP corporate pilots. Um, a lot of the captain positions require an ATPL. So what a lot of people do is they'll get their commercial pilot certificate and instrument rating and become a co-pilot and work up their hours and the requirements before being eligible for an ATPL. Um, because for an ATPL of that 1200 hours, you need at least 500 hours of cross country time, 100 hours of night, and 15 hours of those have to be in helicopters. You need to have at least 75 hours of instrument and 50 hours must be obtained in flight, not in a simulator. And at least 15 of those need to be uh, PIC in a helicopter. So um, unless you're in an IFR machine flying at night and flying IMC, it's hard to get that kind of experience. So that's why a lot of co-pilots have a commercial pilot certificate with an instrument rating and the captains have an ATP certificate. So once you've got the requirements, then you can go and apply for um, some training for the ATPL. And it's usually around about 25 hours of dual instruction, 15 hours of instrument flight, 
and then about 40 hours of ground school. Then you can apply and do your ETPL flight test. And once you have that, then you will be given your ATPL certificate and then it allows you to be able to go and command an aircraft under a captain um, job position. So it get, takes some, a while to get there, but um, it's, it's the highest certificate that you can get as, um, as a helicopter pilot. I have my ATPL and by the time I went for it, it was it was a breeze. It was easy to do because I'd already been flying and doing all the stuff and learnt what I needed to. So if you want even more information on the different types of certificates, the hour breakdowns and the cost breakdowns of both um, rotary and fixed wing, go over to thepilotteacher.com forward slash certificates and I've got a whole post there that just lays out everything step by step, what you need, what the minimums are, what the student average is, are for each certificate uh, and it will give you a really good idea of how much it's going to cost you to be able to become a helicopter pilot. So I hope you found this video helpful and useful. Um, if you're going to be looking to become a helicopter pilot, I hope it's answered some of the questions about what you can and cannot do. Um, if you found it helpful, I really appreciate it. If you want to hit that subscribe button, that would be awesome. But if you hit that subscribe button, also make sure you hit that notification button so that you get notified every time I bring up new videos. Uh, if you want to give it a like, I really appreciate that too. That really, really helps the channel. And if you have any other questions regarding licenses or anything else, helicopter or aviation related, stick them in the comments. I always love reading your comments and your comments give me the ideas for new videos. So I really, really appreciate it. So thanks for watching this video. Make sure you check out my other videos that I've got here. I hope you'll find them uh, really helpful and really useful and I'll see you next time.